With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Wednesday, May 11th, 2016. President Obama is scheduled to be the first sitting president since 1945 to visit the city of Hiroshima. The president is scheduled to visit Vietnam and Japan for a week, where he is scheduled to meet with several groups in Vietnam and Japan, including a meeting with Vietnamese leadership to pressure the country into agreeing to vote for the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The TPP is a trade agreement with 12 nations, including the U.S., Australia, and Brunei Jerusalem, that the Electronic Frontier Foundation describes as being a secretive, multinational agreement that threatens to extend restrictive intellectual property rights across the globe and rewrite international rules on its enforcement. In Japan, President Obama will participate in his final G7 summit, where leaders are expected to advance common interests to address so-called economic and security priorities, before visiting Hiroshima for a photo op with Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. The U.S. Military Academy at West Point announced yesterday that it would not punish 16 cadets appearing in a photo in questionable poses. The New York Times reports that a photo surfaced last week of a group of cadets holding up their fists in what could have been mistaken for a politically motivated expression. The cadets argued that the pose was intended to show unity and pride and did not violate Army regulations that prohibit engaging in partisan political activities while in uniform. The inquiry noted that the photo was only one of three photos taken of the group, and many West Point graduates questioned whether the cadets were being held to a different standard. Lieutenant General Robert Caslin, superintendent of West Point, noted in a letter that he joined hundreds of staff and graduates in identical poses on the night before the Army-Navy game in support of their football team, but said that the time, place, and manner of a symbol can also hold significant meaning and influence perception. West Point recruiter Mary Tobin told the New York Times that cadets have to manage perception more than any other students their age, adding that cadets should expect to receive further instruction and training based on this incident. The U.S. Senate Commerce Committee, which has jurisdiction over media issues, consumer protection issues, and Internet communication, has sent a letter to Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook asking for answers on how the social media site curates their trending news. Gizmodo.com reports that after an article they ran last week alleging that a former Facebook contractor admitted to actively suppressing conservative topics, Senator John Thune of South Dakota, the chairman of the committee, requested a brief on how trending topics are curated. The interviewed contractor alleged that he and his co-workers were instructed to artificially inject selected stories into the trending module that would prevent stories that favor right-wing leanings from appearing on a user's feed. And one former curator said that sometimes an approved breaking news piece would be injected into the feed because it was not trending fast enough. A statement from Facebook says that the company takes allegations of bias seriously and the guidelines that govern the trending news do not permit the prioritization of one viewpoint over another. In Kettering News, the Kettering student government is hosting another free movie night. Students are invited to join them at the theater on Corona and I-69 tonight at 8 to watch Captain America Civil War. A valid Kettering student ID is required, and a limited quantity of food and drinks will be provided. And finally, the Michigan Senate is voting on a bill introduced by Senator Jim Stamos of Midland that would prevent communities from instituting a ban on plastic shopping bags. The bill could prohibit a local government from adopting or enforcing an ordinance that would regulate the use of auxiliary containers, including plastic bags, disposable cups, or other containers used to temporarily transport food. The bill is designed to preempt legislation already in place in states like Colorado and New York that could put a tax or an outright ban on plastic bags. No such ban exists in Michigan. However, Senator Rebecca Warren of Ann Arbor said on the Senate floor Tuesday that her community had been working on the issue for years. And Senator Steve Bita of Warren said he voted against the bill, noting that it seems to be a part of a continuous effort to erode local control in this state. Senator Stamos defended his bill to Emily Lawler on MLive.com, saying that the legislation is designed to create consistency across the state, adding that the state has communities that are already considering such a ban, and he felt it was probably better to take a proactive approach. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.